Hey guys, Fred here, AF Math and Engineering. Today we are going to talk a little bit about how to find the inverse of a function, okay? This is your typical calculus one, kind of a first part of the course type stuff from university. And it's fairly straightforward, but there are a couple of rules that we have to follow to make sure that we don't make a mistake, okay? So to find the inverse of a function is fairly simple algebra. Uh, we're going to solve this question right here. But I, I wanted to show you just a, a couple of the rules involving the inverse of a function uh, that dictate whether or not that function has an inverse. So not every function has an inverse, okay? For a function to have an inverse, it needs to pass what's called the horizontal line test, okay? And I'm just gonna draw, I'm just gonna draw two functions here, okay? One that passes the horizontal line test and one that doesn't, okay? So this here is x cubed, okay? Y equals x cubed. And if this is x and this is y, all right? And what the horizontal line test is, is you can draw a horizontal line anywhere on the graph, okay? And it doesn't intersect the function twice, okay? So as you can see in this x cubed, I can, I can anywhere I can put the, the horizontal line on the graph and I won't, it won't touch the function two times, okay? So that means that the function is one to one, okay? That it's an increasing function. For here, in, in the case of x squared, okay? Um, we can see that this does not pass the horizontal line test because it intersects once and then twice, okay? And that does not have an inverse, all right? So how, how we can also kind of show that is like if we have x cubed one equals x cubed two, okay? So if I can, if there is a number that exists for x cubed one that would equal x cubed two, okay, and another number that, you, that I can put in here. So for example, if I were to put in like three into here, okay, and I was put in five into here. If I were to get the same result after plugging those into the, those two functions there, then this would not be a one-to-one -one function, okay? So luckily for us here, because we know that it's one-to-one it's -one function, but there's no number that you can plug in for x cubed one and then a different number for x cubed two that will give you the same number, okay? So I hope that makes sense. So this is that condition, therefore, also shows us that the inverse of the, this function is possible. However, for x squared, there are, we can put in two different numbers and get the same result. So for example, if I were to use negative two squared, two squared, okay, we would both, we would get four on both sides, okay? Make, and that also confirms that this is not a one-to-one -one function. So those are the rules, and hopefully that helps explain that. And let's just solve this problem really quickly, and I'll show you the best way to do it, all right? So we have y is equal to f of x is equal to one plus root of two plus three x, okay? So the way I like to do this is I like to just solve for the x variable, okay? So as we can see, the x is the independent and y is the dependent variable, okay? So we're gonna solve for the independent variable and then we're just gonna flip them once x is isolated, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. We'll move the one, okay? All right, and let's come over here. And let's just go ahead and square this whole thing, okay? So we have y minus one squared, okay? Equals two plus three x, all right? And then we are going to just move that two over, okay? To the other side. And finally, we just divide the whole thing by three. Okay, equals x, all right? So we're at the final step. We solve for x and we're just gonna flip the x and the y, okay? All right, and there you have it. That's how to solve for the inverse of a function, okay? So on most tests, if, if your professor were to give you something like this and they said find the inverse, most of the time it, it, it will have an inverse and it's, it might be something that's difficult to actually graph and do the horizontal line test with. So I would assume that most of the time the inverse will exist. 
Anyway, so that's how we solve it, and that's a little bit about the rules of how the inverse uh, works, and thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.